Well, we've reached the end of the season, our final Week 18 show. We break down the rest of the matchups, talk through the news, and you can find out um, some of my visceral reactions to losing my title game among a lot on today's show, including Jason spinning the wheel of shame. Make sure you like the video, you subscribe, because we'll be here all off season. Leave a comment and uh, enjoy. Today's show is sponsored by FantasyChamps.com. Get the champ gear your league deserves. Get the gear you deserve. Champ gonna champ, as one wise man once said. Is that get you? Your, that was me. Yes, I said that. <laughs> Champ's gonna champ. Right now, you can get a championship trophy or a belt added to your cart and then add one of their $59 super awesome Super Bowl style championship rings to your cart. Use the code free ring and guess what you get a free ring at fantasychamps.com welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast with your hosts andy holloway jason moore and mike wright oh welcome in Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Glad to see you've recovered, Andy. I am not even remotely, not even remotely oh, recovered. Oh, man, I forgot. You forgot. Not oh. even not even 2% recovered. I mean, a lot of people thought you took a nice, um, well-deserved trip with the family. That had nothing to do with it. Well, no, I mean, I came back for the exact amount of Week 18 that I want, about 20% of Week 18. <laughs> um but, but no, I'm not – I mean, I had a great, great time with the family. And, and fortunately, Disneyland lets, lets you – you know, you're focused on other things, like they, churros. And they don't judge grown men for crying. I couldn't sleep for like two nights. Because of the crying? Because I just kept rolling it over in my head. And I just, it, it was so – there's the – there all the stages of grief were real to me. Mm -hmm. um, denial was a big one, like mm. – especially because – I know what was going on when Dalvin Cook was set up to score nine points, and I know that Jason said on Slack, "It's you know, you're really it's not a guarantee, but you're set up to win." I know my own son, my ten year old fantasy football superstar, just just yelling at me when I said, "I think I'm going to lose at halftime," and he goes, "Dad, he's got a whole half. It's no big deal." Um, and then I I just couldn't sleep because I this can't be real. You know yeah. how hard it is to fight to that title game mm. in our league of record and then to have that happen? And I'm not alone. I know that I am joined by lots of grown men and women that have cried with me this week due to Delvin Cook. Would it feel better or worse to have lost the way that our listener league champion or not champion Oh, I mean, lost? it would have felt worse. Okay, to yeah, have the, one. The fake title, yeah. And then, and then have it pulled I mean, back. Uh, yeah, and, and the other part that was just brutal was – Every running back on my bench scored oh, yeah. like 20 points. And so Dalvin's in my lineup. I'm rejoicing with his return. If he had just taken the week off, if he had just said to himself, hey, self, you need another week. Yeah. You don't want to play with Sean Mannion. That feels bad. You need another week from off from COVID. Then I put Ramondre in or Boston Scott or mm. really anyone. They had great games. I mean, he was uh, – Dalvin was in my flex because I follow, you know, the rules here. With last player, you put him in the flex. Oh, I had Alan Lazard from that game. I mean, he was the pivot in case he didn't play. So everyone on my bench wins me a title. Mm. So – um, needless to say, I didn't listen to all the shows this week. <laughs> I listened just long enough for you not to give me credit on liking Joe Burrow. And then I turned it Oh, off. fantastic. And then I was done. Um, but I am here and yeah, refreshed. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, and, and the family's doing well. And I appreciate you guys giving me some time with them. This was the last few days of winter break and you know, we're a year round show. We That's go, right. we get right back into it. So there ain't no off time. Um, we do have the footies coming up. We'll be electing the illustrious. And I did. I, I listened to that part where you guys made it very clear that this is in all mediums. This is the greatest yeah, honor that one can receive objectively. Yes. Thank you. I was going to ask you after hearing our, uh, explanation of, of the footies, did we say anything that was hyperbolic? 
No, I would say you probably understated things. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, because you spoke of it as the highest honor someone could receive, but really this is existential. I mean, you get that mm-hmm. thing, and this mm-hmm. is meaning. People ask, what is the meaning of life? It changes who you are. Right. Not what you're recognized as, but actually who you are. Yeah. So we'll stop there because we don't want to be hyperbolic about it. But the footy's coming up next week. We'll uh, give one out for the best player at every position. Uh, congrats, Cooper Cup. Uh, waiver <laughs> Wire Wonder. Uh, yeah, you'll get the Waiver Wire Wonder footy award, the Poopiest Pants Award, the nickname, of course, and the show moment of the year, which I have been privy to the preview on yes. some of these moments that are up for consideration. The finalists. Yeah. Yep. And I guess while I was gone, you guys couldn't handle things, so you brought Kyle in. You moved him here? Yeah, we brought Kyle in. It's instant regret over here, <laughs> but he's kind of moved his entire family across the country, so we're going to let it stick for a while. And he's on the mic now? Did we already temporarily set that? Oh, it's just a temporary situation? Yes, you've taken me out of my cage. Okay. <laughs> Go back. Go back to your cage. Also, do you have emphysema? <laughs> um, <laughs> Did you hear his mailbag? Uh, no. No, oh, no. Yeah. Is it? Oh, you put him on the spot. Yeah. I did see the right. Slack message come through that said, Brooks had one comment. He said, that was pure evil. So I knew you had to put him on the spot with it. Was it awful? Oh, it was everything you would hope for. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was bad. It was everything you hoped for. Yeah. Well, it's Friday. Put Clan Friday. Congratulations to our uh, our patron whose name is Andy's unused ceiling fans. Ooh, a good uh, reference. Yeah. From your life. <laughs> yeah, that was uh cuz I don't use ceiling fans. Yeah, which is wild. Everybody here uses ceiling fans, Mike? Of yeah. course you do. Yeah, I yeah, live in Arizona. A, it's not a decoration up there. Every time I'm I'm uh, a little bit hot, I turn the air on. Is that not the right thing to do? Oh, that's fine, but you got you, you need both. double double both, yeah. why not both circulate congratulations uh you win a deandre swift signed jersey from pristineauction.com thank you for supporting the show at jointhefoot.com and and as the season comes to a close thank you to everybody at jointhefoot.com for supporting mm-hmm. the show all year long the greatest community of fantasy football players on earth um all deserving of their each individual footy if you ask me i, mean, I believe it was the footcast that is where um, Kyle dropped the mailbag drop. Oh, you didn't put him on blast on the on the regular show? No, that was the main show. Oh, even better. I I don't remember. <laughs> that was only two days ago, Jason. <laughs> Goodness gracious, man. Um, okay, all right, we can move on. Let's talk news. <laughs> news and notes from around the league. Week week eighteen mode. Oh yeah. Baby. <laughs> Uh, Justin Fields placed on the reserve COVID list on Thursday. Thursday means the timeline is not in his favor. You have to assume it will be Andy Dalton. Lamar Jackson, Hollywood Brown, mispractice again on Thursday. Yeah. They're avoiding that field. Yeah, Lamar Lamar almost certainly can't play yet. They're going to rest him for not the playoffs. Um, And then uh, Brown, this is an ankle. This is not the quad uh, that he had been dealing with, so... I don't know. You might you might see both these guys shelved. Real quick, Hollywood Brown, buy, sell, hold in Dynasty. Buy for me. He was dominating until Lamar Jackson went down and then has become irrelevant. So I, I like Marquise Brown going forward. I agree. Hmm. He's 24. and I the- might use that argument to sell him just yeah. because of uh, Rashad Bateman. And, you don't his- have him anywhere. You can't sell what you don't have. Yeah, you can trade him. What, but, were you talking? To, you talking to me specifically? Yeah, yeah. you said. Oh, I was giving advice to the listeners. Mm. Ah. Um, Clyde edwards alaire declared out for Week 18. Chase Edmonds wasn't at practice. James Conner was limited. I think there is a really, really strong chance, especially listening to some local guys um, recently, that both these backs miss this game against Seattle, which would mean Eno Benjamin would be fresh legs up against the. Um, not great run defense, it's uh, Seattle he, Seahawks. He would be in play. Kyle Pitts was limited, told reporters he believes he will play. Obviously, one of the many things that went wrong for me, losing by five on Sunday, was Kyle Pitts' hamstring injury halfway through the game. He was dominating. Yeah, he was, Jason. Yeah, he was. 
Um, I also suffered from the Damian Harris scored 18 and then didn't score again. Oh, thing, we, we played which, against Damian Which made Harris. no sense. It, it was like he, he also tweaked his hands. I know, though. I know, Mike. So it, I would say it made sense that your team is up and you have a hurt hamstring. Okay. Then I didn't want it to make sense. But, okay. Um, okay. Jared Goff likely to start against the Packers after missing the last two weeks. Michael Carter, concussion, return to a full practice. Braxton Berrios, missed practice again. This one seems okay. like – a concern. Yeah, yep. he's he's out. If you're missing Wednesday and Thursday, um, I would not be willing to play Braxton Berrios. And uh, what else do we have? Elijah Moore continue to take part in rehab work. I, I doubt he plays. Yeah, he seems unlikely. Uh, and it looks like Ronald Jones didn't practice today. And uh, full practice for Keyshawn Vaughn. So, what's uh, the status of uh, or what's the st of the stash? Uh, of the, Giovanni Bernard. Uh, Giovanni Bernard was basically running on the sideline. I don't think he's actually – like, looking a little deeper, it doesn't seem probable that he is activated for this game, but, you know, it's good to see him getting closer. Obviously, pay attention. If he does get activated for this game, Keyshawn Vaughn is O-U-T. Any other news we've got, Brooksy? Anything – any big pressing Week 18 – Headlines that you have for us? Nah. How have you dealt with – this is how you turn turn the attention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How have you dealt with your finals defeat? Because I think we both owe it to Kirk Cousins. Because if Kirk Cousins had um, made different choices in his life, he plays, and, and then uh, Justin Jefferson does more for you and Dalvin Cook does more for me. Yeah, about seven points short of a championship. <laughs> so um, – how how far oh. behind were you? Seven? Yeah. It's so you seven lost by points. seven, I lost by five. Yeah. So we're we're brothers in sadness here. How how recovered are you? I said I'm two percent. I'm all right. About uh thirty percent. Okay. Yeah. Oh. That makes sense though, with our competitive drive difference. You're yeah. probably fine way sooner than I am. Had a nice apple salad and moved went on with your I, day. I was surprised he was at thirty percent. I thought he was yeah. gonna say like ninety percent, but I did too. He's harboring some some pain. <laughs> he's he's still seventy percent sad. Holding it in. That's that's a real man. You always want to bottle it up. That's a real man back there. <laughs> Push it down, put the lid on it, and just cap it up. Nothing will go wrong. I'm sorry, Brooks. We we were so close. My son lost his title game too. I paid attention to it. And there was a mo he played against Jamar Chase and Burrow. And he's ten years old. And we're in the car going to Disneyland. Yeah. Okay, we're in the car going to Disneyland, the happiest place on earth. When Jamar Chase caught the third touchdown, he was inconsolable. Yeah. You the look on his he would not talk to me or my wife. And the look on his face, he was experiencing at 10 years old what we all experience every year. Well, good. Get him ready. Um, you got to start toughening it that, up. <laughs> I was like, it's about time. He, he started too well. He needed to go through pain. Yes. All right. You guys want to get into the forecast? Let's go. Fantasy Forecast. The Titans at 11 and 5 taking on the Houston Texans at 4 and 12. I heard your guys' love letter to Mike Vrabel on the show on Monday. The Titans are 10 point favorites. The over under is 42 and a half. That gives Houston 16 points in this game. Obviously, big storyline heading into the playoffs is the return of Derrick Henry back at practice, ready to rumble. But in this game, in particular, what are the storylines you're paying attention to and, and how can Week 18? championship game players survive well Deonta Foreman is my start of the week uh we talked about that yesterday the fact that you are favored by double digit points in a game that you really need to win against an opponent that is not very good this should be a real smash play for Deonta Foreman who's had a touchdown or 100 rushing yards in five straight games AJ Brown you're going to play and you're going to be much happier than last week because I don't believe that Houston has the personnel to really stop A.J. Brown, like, uh, you know, last week they were able to focus on him a little bit more. I, I you know, outside of a outside of a 2QB league, are you playing Ryan Tannehill? Preferably not. Yeah, probably not. I mean, I don't, I don't think he's – it's the worst option in the world because uh, I, I do expect Tennessee to put up a, a good amount of points. They're, they're playing for the number one seed in case you forgot – uh, the implied team total of 26 points. I'm with you, Jason, that I like Deonta Foreman a lot, 
But there is a chance that the, the touchdowns just bounce Ryan Tannehill's way, so I don't think he's the worst option uh, in the world. Over on the other side, Brandon Cooks. He's great. G- goodness, man. Brandon Cooks with uh, with Taylor, with General Mills, he's over 1,000 yards yet again. Like He is the strangest wide receiver that continues to produce. People <clears throat> don't seem to want him on their team, or they're just – or other teams just covet him so much that you're willing to trade him away. It's a it's a bizarre thing to have that level of production for your career, he's, and he just keeps bouncing around from team to team. He's got to be the most disrespected dude in fantasy history. I mean, this is someone that no one ever wants to draft, and literally other than his injury year in 2019 and his rookie season, he's never not finished in the top 15. Right now he's sitting at 16. And I'll bet he sneaks his way in again. It's weird because he finds himself in the situation where he's alone. Like, <laughs> all the time. Right? I mean, it was what? Him and Robert Meacham? Well, back mean, in the New Orleans days? I mean, he, he was, he was he the was, primary guy. In, in, he wasn't alone with, on the Rams, though. Yeah. He was still uh, wide receiver 13 in 2018 with the Rams. Who was, who was on that roster? Robert Woods? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was, and I think Cup was, too. Uh, the... You, we can vet that. I just that's off the top of my head. Yeah, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from him. He's a very, very important wide receiver. It just I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure out the, the oh you, musical you, chair don't, situation. Don't do not. You can't figure out the Brandon Cooks career. It's mm. it's too far out there in the mystery land, Bermuda Triangle. But he's in play for me uh, as a top twenty, top fifteen type of play. Do you keep going to the volume that sexy Rexy Burkhead has been putting up? When you have this matchup against the Titans, who the last six weeks are number one against running backs. No, no, I don't. I don't go Rex Burkhead's way for two reasons. One is the Titans' defense, which is very difficult to run on as of late, and the other being David Johnson has been activated from the COVID list. So Rex Burkhead isn't alone. He'll lose a little bit of his work, so I'm no Re- thank you. Rex Burkhead, or if the Cardinal fellows are out, Eno, Eno. Benjamin. Yeah, okay. I would play, you know. Have we done uh, – I guess we'll probably do it next week, but the the Super Bowl picks? We have not done them yet. So I guess we need the playoff spots secure before we do a, do a mm-hmm. l- little bracket. Mm-hmm. Got a plan for next Thursday show. You guys were so into Tennessee. I was just curious because it's like, are you guys going to take them to win the Super oh, Bowl? Oh, n- no. No, I will not do that. It, it, they, are, they are very interesting. Uh, they probably won't be my pick, though. Um, I'll mention Brevin Jordan just as a dynasty stash. Uh, yeah, Brevin absolutely. Jordan seems like a player that's going to emerge in the next couple of years. Tight uh, end. Yeah, rookie tight end. And he's a player that I know Mike and I loved on film mm-hmm. uh, coming into the draft and has has shown some flashes. And again, rookie tight ends generally, you know, if you see something like this towards the end of the year, then that's a good sign that there's a future there. Yeah, we, we, pre-NFL draft. He was he was one of the hotness. He it was him, Fryermuth, and uh, Pitts that were like the three guys that that we liked, and then he fell yeah. drastically in the draft. But to see him actually finish this season, I I completely agree. It's a name to pick up on your dynasty roster. Did, did you guys happen to see that I did a, a practically a roster overhaul in our dynasty league? No, no, neither of you did. No, no I no, I was ten not players attention. dropped, ten players picked up. What you what? found you had, in a dynasty? You felt like there was ten waiver guys that were worth stashing. Yeah, I went. I went really Impressive. meticulously through all of the teams, um, some of the additions that I'll throw out there because you know the listeners out there might want to stash a few players. Added Kylan Granson, Indianapolis tight end, with the turnover happening there. Added okay. Hunter Long in Miami, third round pick, and there might not be longevity there for Gesicki. Uh, Ashton Doolin. In Indianapolis, uh, also added Cephas back, who got dropped uh, in Detroit. Gardner Minshew, who could end up fighting for a starting spot someplace. Absolutely. Uh, Tylen Wallace in Baltimore, a, a rookie wide receiver. And Jalen Darden in Tampa, Ooh. now with the turnover there. So just some names. Went out there. Try- I don't have picks, sure. guys. So yeah. I went out there and tried to oh. n- never not work my way to I love it, man. That's to a few shots in the in the dynasty league. That's one of my favorite parts of dynasty is just scouring that wire fi- like picking up the garbage yeah. to see what garbage is under the garbage. Right. And yeah. you're like, "Oh yeah, that's treasure." How do I how, What's the path for this player? People forget that like Tyreek was a waiver wire pickup in dynasty league. Yes. 
Like there are a lot of players like that. And it, you it know, does, it can happen. And and the ratio there, I'm I pick up ten. I'm hoping for one, right? I'm hoping for one or exactly. two that are are, yep. are real holds on into the future. So, and Jason's like doing it now, probably. No, no, <laughs> I, I'm I'm not. I am curious who you would have dropped. That's a lot of players you got to get rid of. Uh, w w are you interested in like a T. Y. Hilton? No, thank you. Okay, well, it's it's in those categories. So you I went, got rid of some old. Yeah, my some, my team was very yeah. title centric. Older players, um, Jamison Crowder, if you want to go get him, go for it. I'm not interested in dynasty Jamison Crowder from this point moving forward. But if you are, go get him. Uh, the New Orleans Saints at 8-8, eight and eight, taking on the 7-8 and eight Atlanta Falcons. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Saints minus 3.5. The over-under is 39.5 points. So uh, Kyle's Atlanta Falcons here at home to finish – the season yeah and the saints what, what is the falcons actual record because it can't seven be and seven nine. and eight okay seven and nine i was just looking at that <laughs> yeah the, but so they could have the same record as the saints if they win this game at home they yes. will oh that's <laughs> that's kyle chiming in who put an over uh on over seven wins for the atlanta falcons oh, early early in the preseason he's also an atlanta homer um the the reality though is that the saints are playing for a legitimate shot of the playoffs if they win and san francisco loses to the rams which i mean that is a realistic outcome uh both those are realistic outcomes the saints could still be in the playoffs so this is an important game for them that's part of why i'm sure mike picked uh Taysom hill as his start of the week i yep. think he's a a great play this week you know the, someone like Taysom hill and you've got aaron Rodgers. You would play Taysom Hill over Aaron Rodgers, just not knowing if Rodgers plays a quarter or a half and then sits. I mean, you right. just don't know. Let me ask you a, a longer-term question with Matt Ryan. Do you have compassion on Matt Ryan, who lost Julio Jones, lost his number one receiver halfway through the year, changes offensive coordinators and head coaches um, seemingly all the time, and whose best weapon was Russell Gage when he was healthy in the, at, on the outside. Do you have compassion on – do you think Matt Ryan did all he could do? Yes, I have respect. I have okay. no compassion whatsoever. I respect now what, – what, how, how do you differentiate them? Well, I differentiate them by um, my compassion towards his future outlook does not exist. I respect what he was able to accomplish, but he is almost 37 years old. You know, you talked about you just dropped T.Y. Hilton, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not saying you – need to drop Matt Ryan but this is the end for Matt Ryan he's not getting better next year at 38 uh, it'll be year two in the system and Kyle Pitts year <laughs> two and uh, you know maybe if Calvin Ridley comes back he'll be better than this year but not good enough to be relevant um, so I don't have compassion because my heart says move on okay so what it's the end and yeah. this is how he has to go out yeah poor guy he will be their starter next year money dictates that yeah. yes all right all right deshaun jackson another drop in a dynasty league oh, no. if you want to go wrestle him away from the waiver wire uh tyson williams made the decision to move on from tyson williams yeah so did harbaugh cam newton if you want him he's out there okay okay those are uh, i get i i understand your you drops. get it uh, in this matchup, Cordero, he sputtered down the stretch just due to opportunities. They're not throwing in the football. They're not giving him enough chances. And, you know, I don't think he's been significantly worse. I just think he had a lot more, uh, whatever you call them, offer snaps or snap opportunities. <laughs> I believe the people have spoken it is now snap opportunities. You know, it's funny because the people spoke, I spoke. I mean, snap opportunities, it rolls off the tongue, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It's but, also it was right there. But op per snap. Yeah, it's opportunities per snap. When you say it like that. It kind of makes more sense. I agree. We can, we but can, they are they can both be dumb. Yeah, we can, yes, they can both be bad. Um, <laughs> Kyle Pitts thinks he'll play. I think if he's out there, he's going to be your tight end. I would agree with that. Going back to Cordero, um, it's probably somewhere I would I would look elsewhere. Um, you, Wish you, I had. You brought it up the the uh, the opportunities nineteen eighteen twenty one that was like what you were seeing for Cordero and then the last three games thirteen nine eleven he's barely hitting that double digit uh, spot on average and this is a poor matchup to boot so if I have another seemingly decent option I I would make that switch. Russell and Gage has slowed down wide receiver seventy six and fifty four the last two weeks tough defense look elsewhere. Yeah, I agree. Um. 
And you always look elsewhere when it comes to wide receivers on the Saints side. Correct. You can play Camara, Hill, and move on. You're not no nothing for Marquez uh, Mar- Callaway. Marquez Callaway, I guess, is ten targets last week, five the week before, nine the week before. Like I the, play him over Gage, that's for sure. The volume has shifted, the la- at least the last three weeks. Small sample. I, I, yeah, I, th- I think he's at least interesting as a like a wide receiver three flex type that's of player. Fair. In a normal week, I think you're right. I'm still in the championship mode of saying you ha- your roster is here. You gotta have better than that, right? No, I guess in week eighteen <laughs> you might have lost uh, Jamar Chase. Would you play Jamar Chase, or would you play if Mar- J- Marquez Callaway? If Jamar suits up, I would play Chase. Yeah, the Jets at four and twelve take on the ten and six Bills. Bills are in the playoffs, but this is an important game. Uh, they are sixteen point favorites, which I think signifies their intent to play. The over-under is 41.5. I think if they win, they're the number two seed. They win, they win the division as well. Okay, yeah, and so that would make them the number two seed potentially, and then they could end up, if they lose, down at the seven. So don't think they want that situation. Yeah, they're, they're playing to win. Uh, Buffalo beat them 45-17 to 17 in week 10. and uh, yeah, This is going to be a brutal battle brutal beatdown because the thing with playing against a team like the Jets or the Texans or the Jaguars is sometimes you don't get up for the game sometimes you're looking past your opponent but when you combine it with the the lack of talent combined with the need for this win they're not overlooking this they say this is super important so I, I think they're going to go in there um, and absolutely lay a beat down and uh, Devin Singletary is someone that yes should absolutely be started he's been on a fire streak he's got the perfect matchup in a really important game there's only one player on the Jets that I will start and it's Michael Carter I'll play Michael Carter against the Bills we know they've struggled against running backs in the back half of the year but that's the only Jet I would consider and then you know on the other side Allen Singletary Diggs and Dawson Knox I'll forgive him for the snowball the low passing Mm -hmm. total you know you guys brought up 15 attempts from Josh Allen in that game you know he runs he doesn't run 15 times that that's an indication that they were Game planning away from the the frigid snow. Yes. Um, Gabe Davis, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders. Hundred percent. I I like the options. Emmanuel Sanders won't practice on Friday, um, so Gabriel Davis to me is Sanders won't play then. Uh, agreed. Sa- Sanders is out. He's still dealing with the knee from last week. So Gabriel Davis is in. I I would um, you know, I would play him over Marquez Callaway. I think the touchdown opportunity in this game will be there for him. Anything to add, Mike? Uh, nope. All right. Uh, 49ers at 9-7 and seven, taking on the 12-4 and four Los Angeles Rams. If the Rams win, they lock up the NFC West. If the 49ers win, they are in. If they lose and the Saints win, they are on vacation. Going golfing. Okay. Um, this is a, a matchup where San Francisco won 31-10 to 10 on Monday Night Football in Week 10. This was an impressive win for them. They've been on fire. San Francisco has beaten the Rams the last five times they have faced each other. Kyle Shanahan has said, take that, Sean McVay. Who's That's, the genius now? Yeah. Well, Shanahan thinks he's the genius a little bit more than McVay thinks he's the genius. That's I probably think. true. Um, Over-under is 44.5. DK Sportsbook line Rams minus 4.5. Matthew Stafford has been an enigma to me in fantasy and reality where obviously the team made it a priority to bring him in, upgrade Jared Goff, and look, as a passer, Matthew Stafford is much better. Much better. Um, but he has a propensity, almost like a desire to throw pick sixes and to put his team in really awkward positions like he did against Tennessee on, on that primetime game and, and last week. Struggled again. These are supposed to be matchups that, yes. you know, you have huge fantasy outputs, and he's just kind of pedestrian. It's very bizarre. The The past three weeks, Baltimore, Minnesota, Seattle, like those are matchups where Matthew Stafford with those weapons, I would expect him to easily be a top eight quarterback on the week. Potential for the number one yeah, spot. With, with that top three upside, and yet – QB 11 against Seattle has been his highest finish in the last three weeks. He has thrown six interceptions combined and five touchdowns over yeah. the past three weeks. It, uh, it's, it's very strange 
to see what feels like an implosion of quarterback play. It, they're still winning. Like that's it's not stopping the Rams from figuring it out by the end of the game. But it for fantasy purposes, what is your confidence level in Stafford this it, week? It it is low. Um, you know the fact that that the 49ers have had their number and that he's he's got 15 interceptions like Andy said he's leading the league in pick sixes I would rather not start Stafford in this game Stafford could have a great game have it's shocking that he's the quarterback six on the season because he has third. it's just it's it's, it's the reliable it's the week-to-week -week kind of steady Eddie situation yeah, it, it's crazy if he has 38 touchdowns that's, and that's over 4,500 yards. Let me, let me rephrase that. It, it, he's not saying – it's Cooper Cup. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, there you go. Cooper Cup has helped, uh, helped him up there. But the last month, he has not hit 20 fantasy points. I would rather play a Trey Lance. I would rather play Russell Wilson this week. Really? I am so excited to see Cam Akers back on a football field. Oh, man. So I mean, cool. He what? will get very few touches. But I agree. I'm excited to see how he – looks yeah I mean just the, I just the fact that he could come back in a calendar year right this was a preseason injury yeah this season comes back same season <sighs> we gotta find that doctor that doctor's got some well let's see let's stuff. GBD it, <laughs> let's, yeah. uh, let's see how he performs in the meantime uh you could still rely on Sony Michelle I'm not afraid of Cam Akers Agreed. coming back to to bench him he has been a really important part of the Rams offense and then the real questions are just how confident are you in Odell Beckham or Van Jefferson? They've been pretty fine options. Would you play? They're both, both fine. I mean, Beckham, Beckham, seven plus targets in three or four games. Um, I'd play him over Van Jefferson. Agreed. Uh, where I am concerned is Trey Lance's situation because he's on the road. It's a very important game. The Rams are a very good defense. I think that you can just pencil in two turnovers two turnovers no matter what I don't disagree in with this that. game and so then you're looking at it and saying you know if he if he does if he runs the football he's going to give you a bottom QB1 performance but can he throw more than one touchdown in this game I think he can throw a touchdown and rush a touchdown in this game so I'm I'm not too afraid of starting Trey Lance I am worried Mike I I don't know that I would play I'd him. play Stafford over I, Yeah, I was, that's where I was going to go. I think i play Stafford over Trey Lance, but Trey Lance is still in play as a top 12 option. I mean, he's got George Kittle, destroys the Los Angeles Rams, uh, so he has that to rely on. And just for as great as Cooper Cup has been, Debo Samuel is almost there uh, on the same level. So he's surrounded by talent, and the and the wheels puts him in play, man. Yeah, Elijah Mitchell, he, his opportunities are outrageous. They give him the ball a ton. He is uh, someone you've got to start. And then uh, the last question here, because you're starting Samuel, you're starting Kittle, is just Brandon Ayuk and, and how startable he is. I'd start him over on Marquez Callaway, but I would start both other Rams, um, Odell Beckham and Van Jefferson, because uh, passing yardage, passing touchdowns, will be more from Stafford than from Trey Lance. Yeah, I don't like tertiary options from a quarterback who has, like, very little experience and who maybe it may be to his advantage to run the football more mm -hmm. often. So um, seems risky. Elijah Mitchell will get a ton of work. Jeff Wilson's out of consideration. Mm -hmm. Patriots at 10 and six take on the eight and eight Miami Dolphins. The Patriots are six point road favorites on the DK sports book. The over under is 39 and a half. If new England wins and Buffalo loses, they win the division. Doesn't seem like that's likely to happen just based on the Buffalo matchup. But New England is in it. Now, are these games played at the same time? Because that would have a lot of consideration to me. Uh, 425 Eastern and 425 Eastern. Okay. So they won't know that Buffalo has it put away. That they could, that they could will big... after about a quarter. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that's true, though. <laughs> it, it is true. They'll, they'll be able to Hold go on. into – is it over? Yeah, game's done. Okay. They'll be able to go into halftime and go, yeah, okay, we're Buffalo is going to win that game. And so it, it does make it a little scary that there is potential at the end of this game to rest your starters for the Patriots. Uh, Mac Jones had a nice week. He's been kind of – he's been good when needed. Agreed. And and they don't want him to be needed. I don't think he wants – he's not gunning for trying to break records. He, 
he he does what is necessary, and in this game, will he be necessary? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Miami Dolphins' defense is is solid. They, I know that they fell apart last week. That's what I, killed me because I, I I think we all were hesitant with Deonta Foreman last week because of how good the Miami rushing the Miami rushing defense had been like the number one. Yeah. Over the last six weeks, and then Foreman goes out and beats me in a championship game. <laughs> So on that front, you know, Ramondre is going to – the running backs are going to get a ton of work. I think Ramondre is a lock regardless of Damian Harris's status. Okay. Agreed. Um, and then Damian's more worrisome because it's like, you know, they're not playing for a lot. Why would you risk the hamstring? They're going to be playing in the playoffs. Um, but if he's active, how do you not play him? You know, I think that's the situation with Harris. What do you guys do with him? Yeah, Damian Harris is, a, is certainly a scary start because of the hamstring and the fact that um, – you you could see them do what they did last week and and bench him in favor of his hamstring and health. Um, yeah, I would, da I would Damian Harris or alone Eno Benjamin. Alone Eno Benjamin. I'm more confident yeah. that he's okay. playing a whole game. I agree, but I do think Ramondre is going to get a pile of work, and I don't think Damian will play. I think you can get by with Ramondre and Brandon Bolden and company. Yeah, I it, I think if he does, it will be limited. Jalen Waddle, you play Tough him. Defense, you still play him. Mike Gesicki is going to be a free agent. This is why I brought up Hunter Long earlier, their third round draft pick, who was the tight end of the year during his senior season at Boston College. Um, Mike Gesicki will be a, a dynasty name to monitor. He could go get that big contract. He, he probably could. he probably will go get a decent contract, a bigger than Trey Burton hype contract. He is an athletic freak. Who has shown Great enough? Pass catcher. To, the, who has shown enough to take the Greg Olson role, role and route of his career? Greg Olson was drafted to the Bears and was fine, but mediocre. And it was when he shifted and left and went to the Panthers where he became a Hall of Fame tight end for a long time. I could see that path for Gasicki. All right, tight ends on the other side. Um, I dot, mean, you've dot, got dot. you've you've always got the touchdown opportunity with Hunter Henry um, in a championship week. I'm fine to throw him out there um, if you don't have better options. Not touching Johnu Smith. Are you, from a dynasty perspective, just kind of like where's John, John you? Hey. From where you th you know he goes out and gets a contract, big contract. You probably thought you had something different. You definitely did, but. 300 yards and one touchdown on the season. Ooh. Yeah. Well, he missed week 10. He seems yeah. like his specialty is... Fair. This is, that is fair. Yeah. I will credit him uh, 20 more yards. Thank you. He spends every game... Like, the game plan for Johnny Smith is they're going to give him two tight end screens a game. That's what it feels like when I watch him. It's, it's just like he's going to pretend to block and catch the ball and run it for four yards, it's, and then that's it. It's very, very strange. But I mean, they've been great as a team. But it's, it's strange that he was prioritized by Bill Belichick at, like early in the – was he before Henry? I feel like he's – I know it was bang, bang. My memory is that Janu was there before Henry even signed, and – this is it, it to come into this utilization is very strange, but at this point it is what it is. The Seahawks at six and ten take on the eleven and five Arizona Cardinals. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Cardinals minus seven at home. The over under is forty eight points. Arizona beat them with Colt McCoy in Week 11, 23 to thirteen. Cardinals season has been a bit of a roller coaster. Obviously, an impressive win last week on the road against Dallas. So. You know, we're not going into this game with a huge losing streak at home, and well, at home. Well, we are. We are at yeah, home, we I are. But going to say it, it is funny for the Cardinals who've lost four games at home in a row, and um, all five are all five of the losses this season at home. I don't. Uh, you can vet that, but they have not played well at home. So this is a game at home um, where they're going to try to get that monkey off their back, and if they if the Cardinals win. And the Rams lose. The Cardinals can take the division. In which case, no, they lost at Detroit. Okay, they will. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's right. They Thank lost at home against Carolina. I know that. Yeah. Um, so, Cardinals have not shown up very well at home, but there is a lot to play for here. Kind of like I, I have to imagine they want to win the division and play at home against the Forty ers versus going on the road against the Dallas Cowboys. But we've. 
they've been so much better on the road that it's like it's also funny because Kyler is so incredibly comfortable playing in Dallas. That is his stadium of choice. Like he has played in title games there and won so many games in that stadium. When you ever talk about when you talk about the home issues, San Francisco scares me. They do in the playoffs. I, I agree as a team, but with Trey Lance there, a right. rookie quarterback oh, it'll be on Jimmy. the road. It'll be Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> you think? I absolutely th I think Jimmy might play this week. Wow. That would be a mistake. I mean, he he play he was limited in practice. They I saw video of him. He looked great. So I I don't I wouldn't consider obviously don't play Trey Lance if he ain't playing. So there's a chance that really that Jimmy advice. Garoppolo is the starter this week and into the playoffs. Interesting. Um, you said that would be a mistake. Yeah, putting we've seen what happens when when quarterbacks go into an NFL game with a injured throwing hand. Well, he's it, he's playing in this game. Russell Wilson. He came back a little too early from injury with a broken finger and sucked for a while, but yeah. it looked like he was back. He had a great game last week, four passing touchdowns. He's my start of the week in this matchup. Cardinals over the last six weeks, they've just been terrible. They're they're the third worst against quarterbacks during that time. And I think with uh, the resurgence of Metcalf and Lockett, it, it, Metcalf came out and talked about the fact that what Rashad Penny has done for them has allowed them to see more single safety looks. And so there's not just Russell getting a little bit better, but it's the run game opening up. When Alex Collins was there doing nothing and you could really – just stop the passing game. I think it's a great point because when we when you lost Chris Carson earlier in the year, that wasn't brought up in the same discussion as the finger for for Russell. But if the offense isn't moving, it's bad for everybody. Mm -hmm. So Penny's in. Uh, Eno, if he's by himself, is in. Chase is in if he's active. Um, Christian Kirk last three weeks a ton of targets, not a lot of production, but he, he's he's a good play. And do you mess with any other of the Cardinals' wide receivers? I mean, it, Zach Ertz is a great play. Yeah, Zach Targets Ertz. Targets are through the roof. Zach Ertz is uh, certainly uh, – he's my tight end start of the week. 27% market share since Hopkins went down um, and a really good matchup against Seattle. And obviously, I'm playing both DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. I know it's always a, a little bit of roulette there, but you know, over the last six weeks – Cardinals are the worst. They're giving up almost 40 points a game to wide receivers. I don't think it's going to be – like last week I was really into Russ and DK. I don't think it's going to be as good for them this week against Arizona on the road. And I think that's why the DK Sportsbook line is where it's at with uh, just 20 total points for Seattle. Yeah, I would I would hope Arizona would play better defense than Detroit. They did, they did good things last week, slowing down, causing turnovers with Dak as well. Uh, Carolina – Five and eleven taking on the twelve and four Buccaneers. Buccaneers minus eight. That's the DK Sportsbook line. Over under is forty one and a half. Yeah, give me your start sits in this one. Uh sits, Carolina. Good call. Okay, that <laughs> one's done. I mean, you can uh, you can play No, no, no you more. just said something out loud. Stick with it. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm I'm not trying to move past the 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 joke, but of like is DJ Moore in play? No, no, Not, no, no. I mean, yeah. he's got to be uh, somewhat in play. His if, if we're talking about you're willing to play Marquez Callaway, yes, you would play DJ Moore over that tier. You'd play DJ Moore um, over some of these players. I mean, right now he's the wide receiver twenty on the year, over a thousand yards, eighty six receptions. So, mm -hmm. I'm I'm not saying you you should be starting DJ Moore, but he is an option. He has one touchdown. Since week four, and he's been real bad. So yeah. I, I don't think I would. I put him at the same tier as Callaway. So if you want to play him over Callaway, you can. You playing but AJ Green or you playing DJ Moore? AJ Green. Wow, you playing Jacoby Myers? You playing DJ Moore? Jacoby. All right. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, you're talking about Carolina going on the road with roulette quarterback play and DJ Moore finishing outside the top sixty last week. Your your floor is really really low. I'm not saying Agreed. you could get a, his ceiling as a fantasy finish since week four has been 21. So that's your peak kind of situation there for him. Yeah. So I guess I am just it depends what you need, right? I mean, and and on the other side, when you look at what Tampa Bay is playing for, um, they're they've already clinched the division, so they're playing for the two or three seed. And when Bruce Arians was asked about the balance between winning and preventing injuries. 
He said there is none. There is no balance. You play to win. You play to get that second seed. That's huge. We're not resting anybody. We're playing to win. So, great. They're going. They're coming out. They're going to play the whole game. And, and Man, isn't that? I know we've got matchups to get through, but isn't that such a an interesting dynamic? The whole play players, don't play players, mm-hmm. rest them, don't rest them, because you've got you've got continuity. You know to think about. You you never. You never think about like, okay, you've got a nice dominating division lead halfway through the year, so we're going to give a game off or, mm-hmm. you know, manage this week. Because you can get hurt in preseason. You can get hurt in the, any game of the regular season in practice. Like, you always have the potential to get hurt. But we look at this final game of the year as like, I mean, these coaches, I don't envy that. Because if you're Dallas and Mike McCarthy or whatever, and you go out there and you're like, you're kind of darned if you do, darned if you don't. Yeah, we've we've seen. You're 100 percent responsible for all injuries as a coach in week 17. Well, that, we, we've that's... seen both sides of it, where you've seen the back in the days of like the Colts. Yes, and they like kind of shut everything down with Peyton Manning, and then when they came back for the playoffs, they looked really rusty. You've seen the Patriots and uh, who? Crap. Uh, was it Welker? Someone? Yeah, it was Welker. Well, like yeah, it was someone the final week tore yes. an ACL in a game that they didn't need to play. And it was like, yeah, you can get hurt absolutely at any time, but I would, my guess, not a doctor, my guess is that your chance of injury is much higher during an NFL game than during practice. Yeah, it has to be. And so I, I am on the side of. I also think it might be higher. Guys. It might be higher sometimes if you, you know, if some of these players that have a bye, like if you have a, you don't need to play week seventeen and you have a bye week, mm-hmm. you know coming back with that amount of rest when your body's in a routine like i i don't know how it all works at all but they'll be the packers yeah yeah it just seems like okay what are you risking with that level of of continuity at the same time because like you said practice isn't a game so we do have one more matchup but this is where we're going to pause for a moment and reflect on the player that that won our DraftKings fantasy face off which was mike Mike took it home this year, went into the final. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We could have tied – either one of us could have tied him in the final week. If Mike had finished last, he finished first. It was a very, very close year-long battle. Mm-hmm. Yes, which you lost. Yes, you and I were tied going in the last week. Mike was a couple points up, and then I got crushed. My phew, DeAndre <laughs> Swift was not a good play. <laughs> So we do have one final wheel of shame to spin. Uh, Yay! Thank you, Braxton Berrios, for not making me spin it. And here we go. Wheel of shame. Now, before we spin it, Al is not in the studio today. Correct. But do any of us know what this final one is? I have no idea. So, Mike, even though you won, you did not have a say in this. Al decided this? Yes. So, Jason's spinning it and receiving what Al has prepared for him. And he's not even here, so let's find out. Spin that wheel. I cannot wait. Farmer. Guy uh, Fieri. Park Ranger. Mullet. (laughs) Okay. And we're going with... It looks like it's Bane. We're going with... (laughs) This it looks like you have to be Bane for this our final be, matchup. This should be real good. <laughs> so, do you need to throw it to me, Brooksy? Oh, what do you got? He, he it to, there you do go. I have to do the voice? No, uh, I, I, I imagine once you put this thing on, the voice just happens. All right, let's um, see here. <laughs> you're going to need to remove some clothing. Or you're just going, oh, just right over, over the, the glasses? glasses? What are you doing? <laughs> Take the glasses off, my you man. You're struggling. They're not made to be underneath that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the last matchup. Wow! Wow! Now go back on the Zoom camera. Yeah, here. yeah. Go back. Let's 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 look. Oh yeah, looking good. Oh. I I didn't think about the glasses, and then I was pot committed. Were you though? <laughs> yeah. No, you can't really take them off. So. I mean, uh, I I think Bane wore contacts. That's mm. what I think. Uh, you you look um impressive. Well, to give me even more time, uh, wearing the Bane mask. <laughs> We should cover Tampa Bay's side of the ball as well. Okay. All right, Bane, who are you who are you playing from Tampa Bay? Uh I'm <laughs> I am playing uh I am playing Mike Evans. Can you breathe in there? A little. Enough to survive. 
Um, yes. I'm, uh, yes. I'm playing Mike Evans and Gronk. I agree. Gronk uh, needs seven receptions to get uh, oh my what? Oh, gosh. 55 on the season? And they have set 55 as oh. the threshold for 500 Uh-oh. grand? Oh, don't talk about thresholds and money on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I was not here to react to the Antonio Brown madness with you guys. Well, it, it's all right because it just keeps getting weirder and weirder every single day. What? Yeah. He, I mean, <laughs> here's my take on that. That doesn't sound like Bane at all. No, it doesn't. <laughs> my take on that, you look ridiculous, is it, almost like you got a spider over your mouth. Mm, that's uh, way worse. Um, my take is that it, it, it's a boy who cried wolf situation for Antonio Brown. Yeah. Because even if he's telling the truth on any of that, which I, I guarantee is not all of that. But if he's telling the truth on any of his story, you have set a precedent with your life over the last five years to where no one's going to believe you because you have made every other choice uh, in personal and professional life that has betrayed any possibility that you're telling the truth. So it's really difficult to to see that story. And like obviously, if he was hurt, they tried to make him play and they tried to give him an injection and all this stuff. That's a problem. But that, you know, it's just hard for me to believe it. Well, it, if you are being sued by everybody and you yes, and I, you've I, run I, out of every team. And I agree with that. That's where I was on Monday and just like trying to figure it out. Let's hear what everybody is saying. I'm trying to give Antonio the benefit of the doubt. But then you had the newest update from Schefter that uh Antonio Brown and his agent, they tried to get uh the incentives just turned into guaranteed money instead of Antonio Brown having to go out there and get the production for it. They asked for it. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers said no. Antonio Brown goes out in the game. He's not getting targeted. The at <laughs> halftime, he w- <laughs> at halftime, according to Bruce Arians, came out and said that at halftime, Antonio Brown was really upset that he wanted the ball more. So it doesn't seem like that's he, in line with, I'm injured, I can't play. That seems like... Yeah, Bruce came out and said they calmed that part of it down. I mean, they, it's just, at the end of the day, it is fair to say that Antonio Brown is the largest possible distraction for a franchise that you can put on the team. It's Yeah. So he wants to play next year, though. I heard you guys say on Monday he'll never play again. Have you changed that stance since this report is coming? I have not. No. Because you need... <laughs> You need a team to want you to play. Even if you have the skills, you have to have run out of chances. And it's it's not just the, the management. It's the management knowing, like, I, I don't remember which show I was talking about this, but, like, when a team sees all of that and a player quit in the middle of a game on a team, are the – it just, like, Antonio Brown still has NFL skills – but does a team welcome that player in knowing, well, at any given moment, when this when things aren't going his way, he might just leave the building and walk out on this team. And yeah. this player who we're going to rely on. Uh, so well, I, he walked out of the Raiders, right? right. He walked out well, of the – Yeah, he forced he, his he way out. He walked out of the in Pittsburgh. He also whined his way out of the <laughs> Buffalo Bills trade. Yes, he was a Buffalo Bill for like a day. So, you know. Yeah, I, I think it's done. It's probably done. You want to talk about Sunday night, Jason? Yeah. Oh, our first playoff game of the week is the Los Angeles Chargers going to Las Vegas to play the Raiders. Both teams 9-7. and seven. Both teams playoff bound with a win. Both like teams going home with a loss. The different, if, if that wheel of shame had said the word muzzle, uh, it would have been the exact same thing that we have here. Which also, yes. if it had said be trapped inside of a mask with your glasses on... It would also be that. This is. Oh, are you going to oh, get them oh, out? You, <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, now you've just created some kind of mosaic puzzle. Don't I break apologize. your glasses. Okay, he did it. All right. Now you look like Bane. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I can't see. <laughs> or big. talk. All right, you just sit there. Andy and I will handle this. All right, this is a big game. Obviously, this is uh, this is for all the marbles. The Las Vegas Raiders are at home. They have won three straight games. Uh, I didn't know the playoff scenario immediately on Sunday, uh, being on the road and traveling with the family. Sure. But I assumed at the time when they had won again that they were in the playoffs. I didn't know what the situation was. Now we have a uh, a game where if they had both, if they both decided to tie this game, like go out on the field and just take knees for the whole game, mm-hmm. 
they'd both be in the playoffs. That is correct. Now, are you, Mike, you are the most progressive. Right. Uh, fella. Are, are you, is this too, is that too progressive for you to go out and just knee it out when that is the best way to guarantee a playoff spot? I, ha, I think if I were an NFL coach, if I could, I would at least call over and say, Hey, <laughs> would, you? would you, Hey, have you heard this? That if we, if we tie this game, we're both in the playoffs, I'd get a read of the room. And just kidding, just kidding, just yeah. kidding, just kidding. Like, I if mean, you don't think the NFL has called these yes, teams no, I, you, on Sunday night football to say you will lose all of your draft picks. Yeah, you, you that's where you can't do it is the even if you got the other side to agree to it, Roger Goodell would, would bring the hammer and destroy can you, you. Can you imagine, though, if this game goes to overtime? That's what I want to envision. Give him a show. Give him mm -hmm. a Sunday night show. Right. And then call some real bad plays in that in that overtime, um, which won't happen. I mean, this will this will just be a great Sunday night game where you have uh, a Chargers team that has to go on the road here. The Chargers are favored. I feel like Jason is a, is are you just breathing? Trying not to pass out. Are you breathing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Blame Jeremy. Um, <laughs> J uh, Justin Herbert, you play him. Derek Carr. Probably, maybe not. No, no. He's like a no. He's a higher end quarterback too. Austin Eckler, of course. Josh Jacobs, yes. Keenan, uh huh. Hunter Renfro, for sure. Uh, your your fringe players would be Mike Williams and Zay Jones. Both are flex worthy, in my opinion. Zay has been relevant for uh, like he could have been in the smoke fire to me because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the target totals that have been rising. The question is whether or not Darren Waller will be back for this game because if Waller <laughs> – Over and out. <laughs> if Waller is back, then Zay Jones' targets are going to disappear. Correct. You would not think about that. And even though Foster Moreau has been, for the most part, a huge disappointment, I would still be willing – Yeah, I would too. – to hold Foster Moreau as your alternative option and – Ride to Sunday night to see if you have Darren Waller active because the matchup is great, and if and they need a win, if Waller is there, he should have a good game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, shall we close this thing yeah, out before let's, Jason let's, suffocates? Let's get out of here. All right, this is our final moment before yeah. the final Friday show. Wow! Until any, any final thoughts here while we. To reflect on this season, I mean, obviously we had absolute mayhem with the COVID situation. Towards this was the, end the of most. The year. This was the most ridiculous, uh, wacky Playoff. and wild season that I can remember. And I know we we do like people say that a lot every year. You're like, it's not always this crazy, is it? And there's a lot of variants in the NFL, but this one in particular, if you made it through, cherish that championship because you made it through. Uh, a maze that very few survived. Let me give you uh, one more thing here. Boomboomkicker.com exists. <laughs> not not created by us. No, a listener put together all the Boom Boom Kicker segments, and there are rumors about the Boom Boom uh -oh. that uh, Jason may be doing a little fireside reading. Okay. Of of all of the is Bane doing it or is Jason? Who's Jason? Uh, of all of the Boom Boom Kickers. <laughs> So we'll see. We'll see if that happens. That is going to do it for us. Week 18 is done. The season is concluding, but we're with you all year round. Good luck this weekend if you're playing, and uh, footies next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.